There have been many questions and doubts regarding 5G. Are there any threats? Or any risks? Although the industry is eager to adopt the 5G technologies, there are still concerns of the impact and consequences to the existing wireless communication infrastructure. 5G mobile networks are separated into two frequency bands known as 5G FR1 or Frequency Range 1, which includes sub 6 GHz and 5G FR2 Frequency Range 2, which includes frequency bands from 24.25 GHz to 52.6 GHz. These are the list of the specified frequency bands of 5G FR1 and FR2, as well as the channel bandwidth each band supports. Take for example, the International Communication Union ITU, Radio Regulation of 5G for APEC region, is set to operate at 3.4 to 3.6 GHz. At the same time, ITU has also previously designated the Spectrum for Malaysia Fixed Satellite Services FSS Earth Station to operate at 3.4 GHz to 6.725 GHz for the C-band. So now, we have a problem here. There will be interference between 5G services and the existing FSS. Another example, according to this recent article, the interference of 5G potentially puts commercial airplanes at risk. This is because US 5G spectrum is set to operate at 3.7 to 3.98 GHz, while the aircraft's altimeter operates at 4.2 to 4.4 GHz. This will potentially cause interference to many of the aircraft's altimeters as it turns out, the 0.22 GHz difference between the signals may be way too close for comfort as it may not be sufficient to guarantee that a cell phone carrier signal will not be mistaken for or corrupt an altimeter signal. So in the face of this potential risk, what can be the solution? The answer is RF filters. Since the beginning of modern telecommunications, engineers have been using RF filters as means to isolate out desired spectrums and reduce interference from neighboring signals. So even when facing this new problem with 5G, the same solution applies. In this case, a C-band filter is the best option. Based on the IEEE standards, C-band operates at 4 to 8 GHz. However, the US Federal Communications Commission also designed 3.7 to 4.2 GHz as C-band and most C-band communication satellites use these bands of frequencies for their downlinks. Here is where the problem lies. Using the C-band from 3.7 to 4 GHz will interfere with the IEEE S-band for radars. Applying a C-band bandpass filter at 3.7 to 4.2 GHz will isolate out the spectrum and prevent any neighboring frequencies from becoming an interference to this bandwidth. So, what makes a good filter in this case? The filter should have sharp roll-off, high attenuation, and low passband loss. This is an example of an ideal RF filter response for low-pass, high-pass, bandpass, and bandstop. Now, let's take a closer look at what a C-band filter is and how it is designed. PewPower produces CSAR bandpass filter which is a retrofitting solution and can be used to remove the sources of interference from the 5G signals to the fixed satellite services. So this filter is designed and manufactured with a very high precision machining with outstanding features. It has a very low insertion loss of 0.6 dB maximum, high selectivity performance therefore is suitable for the extremely small gut band applications and it can be easily installed between the feed and the LED. It has a rug shielder case with a weight of less than 700 grams. So the length of this filter is 120 mm, width is 100 mm, and the thickness is 17 mm. So this filter can handle power um, with a uh, maximum of 100 watts. And both the input and output connectors are based on the WebGuide flank, which is the CPR 229 app. So we also apply the white liquor finishings for the surface coating for the additional protection. This picture shows the VSAT terminal installed on one of the petrol stations. VSATs are used to transmit aeroband data, example the point of sale transactions using credit cards, polling or RFID data. 
or broadband data for the provision of satellite internet access to remote locations, IP or video. If we zoom into the VSAT hardware configuration, it may be shown that the terminal consists of a parabolic dish with fit horn antenna in cascaded with an LNB receiver. The proposed CSAT filter is a retrofitting solution and it shall be installed between fit horn and LNB to perform the filtering operations before signal is fed into the LNB. We now perform the two port measurements of the CSAT uh, produced by field hub. So the two, connect, uh, the two ports are connected to the waveguide flanks uh, adapter uh, through these uh, SMA cables to the network, uh, network analyzer. So let's take a look at the uh, S parameters uh, of this uh, field of performance. Um, if you look at the passband from M1 to M2, so it operates from 3.7 GHz to 4.2 GHz. The passband loss is less than uh, 1 dB and the return loss within this passband will achieve at least uh, 17 dB, um, which is pretty uh, match. Uh, and the purpose of this uh, CSAT filter is to remove the, uh, uh, the interference signal from the 5G which operates between 3.4 to 3.6 GHz. So if you look at the center frequencies of, the, of this uh, 5G sub-6, which is 3.5 GHz, with these filters, we are able to produce an attenuation of at least uh, 86 dB um, to uh, the 5G signals. So on the right-hand side, uh, we achieve uh, at least 55 dB of suppression. Um, so this filter is having a asymmetrical response uh, since the more emphasis is on the suppression of the 5G signals, which is on the left hand side. The demand of this type of interference mitigation filter is rising due to the rapid deployment of 5G base stations. I hope this video provides some insight about the RF interference mitigation and the importance of RF filters. At FieldPal, we provide solutions for different RF applications. If you are interested in more details or have any inquiries, please visit our website at www.fieldpal.com or click the link below.